here what's up giants fans hub watchers youtube and rumble subscribers twitter and instagram followers it's kush back at again with another new york giants video as usual uh we are in a very quiet time of the off season there's not going to be much to talk about going forward up until late july i want to say july 22nd could be wrong don't quote me on that it's going to be when players start heading in for the next phase of the off season which is basically uh the training camp i believe that's where everybody is going to be at that is where it's going to be open to the public i'm definitely going to try and head there as well there's a saturday event i saw on the giants calendar that's called uh back together again or, or something of that nature and then there's also another fan fest this year so if that saturday event is open to everybody i'm definitely going to try and get there i am 100 percent going to try and get to fan fest like i was last year and i'm gonna try and maybe hit up at least one day of training camp so i'll try and be down there for basically three of the many afforded days but it's gonna be fun training camp um not training camp fan fest last year was the best part <laughs> of last year including the regular season and the, the, the experience there was way better than what i got week 18 against washington commanders but enough about that and definitely put down below if you guys are going to be at any of them let's talk about elon manning the legend greatest giants quarterback ever and what he had to say a little bit on daniel jones and his development and whatnot topic that's been beaten like a dead horse yes i know but one that is always going to be talked about up until this man either a performs and, and you know becomes that franchise quarterback or b leaves right and there's always two sides to the situation you guys know i'm kind of down the middle i i used to be a very staunch big daniel jones supporter and defender um and i still do defend him at times because he's had like the worst hand as as uh joe shane uh, had said and as i believe our former coaches and general managers have said and john mara he's had the worst hand dealt possible to a young quarterback near impossible to succeed in this situation but there's things that are in his control that he needs to deliver upon as well and i believe he hasn't delivered upon it my today's video isn't about me talking about that it's simply what eli manning had to say and, and there's a couple of just like big quotes i'm talking paragraphs of quotes here to read to you guys so let's start off with the first one and this is going to be a long one pop it up now by the fifth year, I had been in the same offense the whole time. I knew it. I could coach it up. New guys are coming in. I was speaking the same language as my offensive coordinator, as the coach Coughlin, and as and kind of preaching the same stuff. Manning said on NFL Network. And with Jones, it's all new and it's learning. And he's consistently trying to learn and learn and learn. And it just takes some time before it all sinks in. I think with Coach Dayball and what they've been doing, and that staff, the new GM, Joe Shane, having been around the facility some, the atmosphere has changed, Manning said. So I'm excited for Daniel. I know he's worked extremely hard for you and, you know, been through a lot of offenses, a lot of coaching changes. So hopefully this can be the right one. Real quick, of course, Eli has been in the building as an employee since last year. So he, I believe him when he says the uh, atmosphere has changed because he, got, because he got to observe both the previous atmosphere and the current one also a little bit off topic but eli for those of you that don't know was the one that created fan fest um it was his idea because he's like the head of fan operations or something like that so shout out to eli for that amongst other things of course but of course he's right here um eli had been in basically the same system for his five years and daniel as it says he's been with what is it four different offensive coordinators three different head coaches, something along those lines. That's kind of a near impossible task to give to a young quarterback and tell them, hey, learn this, know it like the back of your hand every single year, something completely new. And in addition to that, we have seen something similar like this very, very recently in the NFL, where our guy has had that many changes at the coaching uh, position for him and the quarterback, and he didn't necessarily succeed because of it. That is Derek Carr of the now las vegas but then oakland raiders and we see Carr is now having success and is definitely past his rookie deal it, it takes time and of course there's all the personnel uh question marks that's been here since daniel's rookie year 
injuries that just seems to pile up offensive line that seems to be non-existent at some points there's a lot of things uh and then uh continuing with the quote um this is from daniel himself it says that it weighs a great deal on me playing football in the nfl playing football in new york i think there's a heavy weight to that I and the whole team feel that and we're working as hard as we can to avoid being in this situation in the future. Yeah, it weighs on me heavy. It doesn't make it easier. At the same time, comparing your path or situation to what other people have had success with and what other people have failed with is also a recipe for disaster. Everyone is going to have a different path. Everyone's going to have a different situation. It's your job to make it work and figure out on your own situation. Things I can't control, you waste energy and effort on and time worrying all about those. I think there's a lot of benefits to my situation and having learned a lot of football and seeing it through many different eyes and heard different coaches, their f different philosophies. I think it could be, it depends on how you look at it, uh, but it could be a positive and it can help you grow. Not necessarily something towards the end that I expected Daniel to ha um, say, but very in line with his character of somebody that's mature, almost always says the right thing, you know, has that, what what uh giants fans and the organization likes to refer refer to as that new york giant personality the hard worker personality that kind of tries to take the good out of everything but like i said not a way that i would have gone daniel's definitely a better person than me because i would have been up there saying yeah man you saw what i had to work with nate soda left tackle at one point i had like no receivers my offensive line is trash my coaches don't know how to coach Jason, don't even get me started on Jason Garrett. I've been on that man since we hired him. Uh, but getting back a little serious here, it's nice to see that that is one way you could look at it. The fact that he has seen so many different offenses in his years, his first four years in the NFL, even though it's literally caused him to not develop properly, he has had a chance to be exposed to a lot of different football. Some of them outdated, but different football nonetheless that hopefully can in some way help him going forward. Hopefully with Brian Dayball, with Mike Kafka, the guys that are going to be in charge of this offense, they can whip something up that can help get us up and running and, and just hit the ground running. But I also don't want it to be too simple. And what I mean by that is it, this, this is things that have worked, both worked and not worked. Where the coaches try to simplify the offense a little bit for a young quarterback so that it's easier for them to learn. I'm down for that as long as the offense doesn't become too simple and, you know, it doesn't become too predictable. You got to do it in such a way that it works like Nick Sirianni and Jalen Hurts. And uh, what is it? Four or five years ago, Jared Goff and uh, Sean McVay. You don't want to fall into it where week in, week out, people know what you're going to do. Definitely want to avoid that. But with Eli, I was wondering what even brought up this. And he was I think it was just a um, just a random talk. Um on the nfl network i have to look into it but a lot of people they love to bring up eli's first couple of years when they talk about daniel jones and i just think it's wrong to do that it's unfair for a couple of reasons one what eli just said he had a completely different start uh he had at least stability in the coaching position um stability in the offense where daniel jones does not and then there's guys that say that oh everybody wanted eli gone his first couple of years compared to daniel jones now and even that is unfair because I'm like, we're in we're in a different NFL. Quarterbacks simply develop quicker now. You could call it if you want, nobody having patience. Sure, that's very true. I agree with that. But it's just the nature of the game now. Game now. Guys develop faster. Um, you, teams are trying to get in and out of a quarterback more quickly because they don't want to waste time. They don't want to waste potential of other players. It's just the name of the game now. And of course, Daniel Jones, with him, we're already kind of if you look at recent NFL, the Giants are spending more time than usual with other teams. I think that they're doing a good job. I, I still very much support the decision to not extend the fifth year option, and we'll see how he does this year. Put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you guys think. Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for checking out my channel, The Hub, here on Giants YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video. Like it, share, and subscribe, and I'm out.